This Seed Starting Moment series is about the whys and some of the hows of my seed starting story. The number one tip that you're going to hear throughout this whole series is keep it simple and stay out of the rabbit holes. Whether you dream of being a flower farmer or you just want to grow flowers for your kitchen table, I'm Lisa Mason Ziegler. I'm glad you're here. Let's jump in. All right, friends, welcome back to seed starting moment number four. When should you start those seeds, right? So the number one thing that I do is first you must determine, is it a cool season hardy annual or is it a warm season tender annual? That is the start. And in fact, I recommend, and this is what I do, is our warm season and cool season are stored together so that we pull the cool season box out and we know that's everything cool in there. That is the number one thing that you need to do. All right. So after you have determined if it's a cool or a warm and you know when you're going to, um, what season you're going to plant them in, what I start looking at, let's just talk about when I'm looking to fall plant those cool season hardy annuals, that can be planted that are winter hardy in my zone so I can fall plant them. When I know to plant them is you, your first jumping off point is, you know, that six to eight week window before your first frost day. You can learn more about that in my book, Cool Flowers. But in addition to that, it's not that simple anymore, right? Because the weather, the, the, the weather is constantly changing and throwing us curveballs. So what I start doing about two to three weeks before that date is going to happen, and you can actually look up the history of your temperatures online. You can go online and Google that question and look back at your previous years if you need to figure this out. When that time starts to come close within two or three weeks, I start looking at the two-week forecast. And so I know that if I'm supposed to plant six to eight weeks before my, fir my first fall frost, the other trigger that really tells me when I want to plant is I want to start seeing 60 degree nights start coming into our screen. I mean, here where I am in southeastern Virginia, I mean, you could still be having 80 degree nights overnight, all night long, 80 degrees. You really don't want to give that to cool flowers. You want to kind of um, get a sense of when your nighttime temperatures start hitting that 60 ish number and holding. So you're really going to have to do a little bit of research about that. What I have learned here in southeastern Virginia is that I am planting more like four to six weeks before my first expected fall frost, because that's when my 60 degree night ish, it tends to happen. And friends, it can be it can be different every year. You just do the best you can, but you want to kind of not especially direct. So if you direct so when it's still 80 degrees at night, they will never germinate if you're direct sowing stuff out in the garden. So the temperature is what really firms up when I want to plant. So I am looking for cool season hardy annuals to have those cool nights coming into our radar um, before I actually plant. Um, perhaps the easiest and most cut dry, um, I understand cool season hardy annuals can be a little iffy depending on your situation, but with warm, it's a little bit clearer, right? I don't plan on planting any warm season tender annuals out in my garden until nighttime temperatures are hitting 60 degrees and holding. There's, of course, cases where I'm taking extreme measures to help my plants that I may try to plant earlier. But normally, with no protection going out in the garden, I am looking for when nighttime temperatures are forecasted to be above 60 degrees. I don't care what the days are doing. It's all about the nighttime, y'all. And when that starts to happen, what happens is your soil is starting to warm up some. So for me, it's pretty simple. I look at the two-week forecast. My goodness, if it is still going to be 50 degrees every night, then guess what? I need to take some other steps or I need to do something differently to get my plants out in the ground. Um, they just don't hit the ground running. So how do you know when to actually start the seed? 
after you kind of get a general idea of when you should be planting, whether it's your succession planting later in the summer or that first planting, is you have to know how many weeks it takes you to grow that transplant. I'm always looking for a three to five inch transplant to go out in the garden. For me, as a general rule, that takes about three to four weeks with soil blocking. There are a few that take longer, some are shorter. Zinnias and sunflowers are two to three weeks. You have to figure this all out, how long it takes you with your setup, your skill, and the way you're doing things. Um, and so your first couple of times doing it, you're kind of shooting at the sky, right? But you will figure it out. So when to start the seed, when you know kind of when you're supposed to be planting them, then you count back the number of weeks that it takes you to grow that transplant. That's your starting day, my friends. And it is really that simple. It is about counting back. It's sitting down with a calendar and doing that counting. And don't feel rushed. One of the things that I think we feel so much pressure about is that we always feel behind. But you know what? That's kind of like old school, friends. There, when you start growing cool season and warm season annuals, what you will soon learn is you can start gardening today, no matter where you are in your year, and there's something to be done. And so you're not behind. You don't need to feel rushed. You're going to get a chance to plant that plant that everybody else said you should have planted eight weeks ago. Don't try to do it late. Put that off. Mark it on your calendar for next year and attend to what you need to do today. That's how we pile too much on. So don't rush. Don't feel behind. Pick up where you are and you will have a great garden. So friends, if you want to learn more about seed starting, soil blocking, how to do it or need the equipment, head on over to thegardenersworkshop.com. 